Where the fuck am I? Oh. Jesse! Jesse, please let me go. I, I won't tell anyone the toys are alive. Please! Just let me go, please! Oh, Buzz, you're here! Oh, you look like shit. <laughs> now, after looked at for being one of the better movie tie-in games, Toy Story 2 releasing in 1999 for the PS1 is a movie tie-in game for a movie I bet you'll never guess the name of. Yeah, you, you got it. Toy Story 2, yeah, all right, you got it, fucking yay. Now, the interesting thing about this game is that even though there are so many toys shown throughout the movie, this game entirely focuses in on Buzz as he is the only playable character. Now, at first glance, this might seem like a bit of a missed opportunity. Of course, there are so many toys, why can't we play as all of them? However, upon further investigation, I feel like this actually benefited the game and also for our titular Space Ranger. As to be expected by his many appearances across the franchise, Buzz sports a multitude of different abilities adapted into this game that you'll use to navigate through its 15 levels. The biggest difference, however, is that his abilities actually work in this game. Now, to today's standard, this game it doesn't really hold up in terms of the graphics, but back in the late 90s, this game was the shit. Now, the main crux of the gameplay here is to go around to each level and collect these tokens. Each objective will have a token tied to it and collect enough tokens and you'll be able to go to the next level. Sounds simple enough, but there's actually a lot of variety in these levels that make the game shine. This is also where I think the decision to make Buzz the only playable character pays off in droves. Aside from only having to code for one playable character, the other main benefit to focusing on Buzz entirely is the chance to really expand out his abilities and make him a more engaging and complex character to play as. Most levels in this game will see you collecting 5 tokens, and the way that you go about collecting these 5 tokens more and large the same way. There's slight variations, but you'll basically be doing the exact same thing. There'll usually be one given to you for giving Ham 50 coins. There's usually a race or a time trial of some sort. There'll be some kind of puzzle or mini game that you need to complete. There's defeating a mini boss. And you'll also be helping someone find five of their little shits. Oi, can you help me, mate? Can you help me find me, kids, please? Now, on top of being able to progress to the levels and also collecting tokens, you also get these clips from the movie, and this is to show you where you are in the overall narrative. However, that being said, I wouldn't advise that you watch the movie through these clips because to today's standard, they look like 240p deep fried memes. Now, for an extra, extra bonus on top of the tokens, on top of the levels, and on top of the movie clips, if you collect every single token and finish every single level, you actually get an exclusive clip from Buzz's OnlyFans. Could you even tell what's on? Okay. I can okay. tell. Okay. Back, back, back. Too late, I'm in the 40s. Gotta go around the horn. Faster. Back, 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 back. Ah, I'm just joking. One can dream, right? So you might think that doing the same objectives in each level grows tiresome, but the game actually does a few things to keep this routine feeling fresh. Firstly, the game actually gives you a lot of freedom as to when and how you go about doing these objectives. If you don't feel like doing anything other than, let's say, collecting 50 coins, that's perfectly fine. And once you get one token in a level, you have the option to move on to the next or continue in the level that you're in. You can also tackle any objective in that level at any particular order, which really helped me stay engaged because sometimes I just wasn't in the mood to do something and it left me feeling like I'm not forced to do something I don't want to do. You can also come back to any level at a later time to complete the objectives that you may have missed. And again, it stops a player from feeling forced to do something that they don't necessarily feel like doing. Now do keep in mind that this game does have a few checks and balances in place to make sure that you are acquiring at least the minimum amount of tokens per each milestone. So you might run into a roadblock like this, but you can just go ahead and get some more tokens and be able to unlock the next batch of levels. Now secondly, the abilities. Buzz has a range of different abilities to use right out the gate. He's got a double jump, a spin attack, a ground pan, and of course his trusty laser. And a really nice touch to when you look down the scope of his laser is you actually get to see the reflection of his face in his helmet. I thought that was really nice. 
Now, if this wasn't enough, he gets a range of other items that you obtain by completing certain objectives as well. Some of these items include a shield that will see you rolling around in a hamster ball-like thing, which will protect you from slime or incoming attacks. You can also get these flying discs so you can kill larger enemies, and you can also unlock a grappling hook to get to higher places. Now, this is only just to name a few of the items that you unlock in this game, but once you start unlocking these additional items, the game really just shifts up a gear. You can just do so much more compared to the base level buzz that you started off with. You can tackle stronger enemies, you're able to reach new areas in previous levels that were once impossible to get to, and the game almost feels a little Ocarina of Time inspired with these new additions, especially with the grappling hook. Lastly, the level design in this game is what sets this game apart, and I think it's one of the biggest strengths in this game. Each level does a fantastic job of translating certain locations seen throughout Toy Story 2, but also masterfully adapts them to not only be a game level, but a game level where you are playing as a toy. There was a lot of attention to detail put into these levels because not only do they have to function as proper levels, but they also had to get the scale right. And what might be an easy get to point A to B for us might have a bunch of obstacles for something as small as a children's toy. The center scale and the impending obstacles that you may encounter is perfectly done here. And I really just enjoyed every single level in this game and I was really looking forward to each level and to see how each location from the movie was adapted into a gaming format. Some of the highlights for me were Andy's house of course, the toy barn, and Al's penthouse where you run into this, holy shit! All these things mixed together as well as seeing the variety of characters return from the movie as well as playing through the narrative of one of my favourite Toy Story movies really just earns this game its spot as one of the best movie tying games ever made. However, that being said, unfortunately the game is not perfect and it's really let down by its camera. And in a 3D action platformer, Having a bad camera is probably the last thing that you want. So the camera is controlled by the L2 and R2 button and you really don't get to change the sensitivity or control of the camera, it's just L2, R2. It constantly gets stuck behind items that might be close to you and the camera is always showing you what is in front of you. In theory that sounds okay, but in practice when you're trying to line up shots or look to a different direction and you're constantly wrestling with the camera that's trying to show what's in front of you and you're trying to look to the side of you, it makes for a pretty bad experience. It also means in platforming sequences it leads to many ill-timed jumps and failed attempts. Aside from the camera, Buzz himself controls really well. I just wish there was an option to decide whether you did or didn't want to invert the scope. You really are stuck with what the game gives you, so if you're not used to the setting this game has, well, too bad. Now unfortunately the bosses also left a little to be desired to me, but I also need to remind myself that this is a game for kids and it's also a movie tie-in game, so I'm not going to be too harsh on them. Some of them are very, very easy, but for the most part, a lot of them will just see you running around, dodging their attacks and shooting when the opportunity presents itself. It's fairly basic, it's probably simple enough for what it needs to be in this kind of game, but I don't know, I just, I just wish it was a little bit more to that. However, one good thing that happens when you defeat a boss is you get this absolute banger of a track. But that's Toy Story 2. Let me know in the comments down below if you're ancient enough like me where you were able to play this as a kid. Um, and if you did, what was your favourite level throughout the entire game? And I also want to thank the coffee supporters on screen right now for putting their snake in my boot, if you get what I mean. <laughs> like and subscribe. I don't get it.